Aloha, we're back with our panelists discussing TMT today, uh, Peter Poe, Timo Stone, and Kalapa Babayan. Uh, I wanted to jump right back in with you, Kalapa, and I want to ask you, what, what else could TMT have done in this situation? There's, there's endless conversations in Hawaii about you know, what is a good project, what project, what do they have to do, who do they have to consult? After 11 years, I mean, the business community looking at this thing is like, oh my God, what, what steps do we have to go through in order to get this? What, what, and, and I want to know, what can we do? So what else do you think TMT could have done, if, if anything? You know, and what I, did you know, they do? You know, the, 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 actually, the actual conversation has been go going on for, for 12 years now. And, and you know, uh, and basically TMT came and had conversations with with, with private citizens, some of these citizens were uh, uh, are, are, are the protectors, that, you know, and they asked for recommendations or suggestions as to as to what they can do to help to help. Uh, uh, what, what is it that they can do that the, that the community would would see as a benefit uh, uh, as part of a benefits package? So, I don't think TMT. Uh, can do anything else with the uh, 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 with, with, with the with the uh, mitigation package that they've already offered. Uh, it is now, you know, basically, uh, uh, it is like a contractual agreement, I guess, that uh, that whatever they've agreed to is 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 uh, signed off by the participants and is now part of a, a package of deliverables. So. I don't think they can go back and 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 renegotiate. Uh, it really is up to the Hawaiian community if they see something that they're impassioned about. I would say, I would say, um, bring it to the table. But as of right now, I believe that TMP has done a, a, a good job of of of, of uh, partnering or or uh, investigating what 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 things would benefit the community and put together a pretty, a pretty uh, uh, um, uh, well thought out uh, benefit back. You know, what, if you, you have a, an opportunity today on the internet to give the governor some advice and the mayor, what would you, would you recommend? I, I think we have to seek what, what alcoholics seek, which is a moment of clarity. There is no, there is no clarity in the message that the state of Hawaii supports TMT. So as Kalipa mentioned, this is a process that started 12 years ago, and there have been uh, at least 10 years in litigation over whether or not we can answer all the questions and accommodate all of the demands. And so the, the, the site is not in the vicinity of the traditional customary uses. It, it does not block the view plane as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. It's not interfering with the depositing of any pico or, or gathering of water at Lake Waiau. It is in a place that by all of the evidence that's been submitted in that decade long process, uh, not interfering with any of the religious beliefs claimed by the Kia'i. So I think that this, the, the, the disconnect is that uh, clarity of a, uh, of a message that it isn't no long, it's no longer a matter of accommodations. The project has accommodated the request and or demands of the practitioners. And why that message isn't coming out from the gov is just beyond me. All you'd have to do is read the record in terms of what are the demands met, what is the response, and is it in the plan? And if you take a look at the plan, you can see the result. Obviously, there's all sorts of accommodation. And then, of course, the, the obvious benefits to the Hawaiian community. Um, it is a tragedy that some, many of my friends who are against the telescope will rob uh, the next generation of an opportunity for scientific achievement, unparalleled. No one is offering Hawaiians this level of educational support. Uh, and, and that's that's heartbreaking for me. Peter, what, the, one of the things that has come up from the IEA protesters I've spoken to and I've gotten lambasted online about this is the, the, the question of arrest. 
Because I've heard that arrests are genocide, arrests are a human rights violation, arrests are, you know, they're violating the Convention on Human Rights. And don't speak to the legal aspect of it, but from, a, from, from your point of view, if you see arrests happen on Mauna Kea now, similar to the Kuruka one, what, how, what is your feeling on that? Because, oh, the, because yeah, the Kiai have said I think they are not going to move, and I believe them. I, I think the arrests, the arrests are a side issue. Um, uh, first of all, you know, the whole optic, including the arrests, is fashioned by mainstream media. Mainstream media tends to be very friendly toward the Kiai and the protectors. So the optic that they create um, helps to actually complicate the problem. The, um, the, there's no question in my mind that the rule of law has to at some time be invoked, period. Okay? Rule of law. But, it can't stop there. So the TMT has to proceed under the law. You're allowed to proceed. But you can't stop there. The state has got to wake up finally that this is about over 100 years of pent up frustration that the trust responsibility has not been met. And worse, it's been violated. That's what this is about. The TMT is like, you know, like I said, it's the match that lit the fire after all of these years. So when you, when you get into this, this uh, uh, there, uh, there's a bunch of other things going on dealing with Hawaiians that is not being addressed. There is no center of gravity of leadership, even in the Hawaiian community. If you say, where are the leaders of the Hawaiian community? Well, you can probably name 150, 200 people, but you can't name anybody politic, particularly Oa, oh, forget about that. You know, they've become almost irrelevant. Uh, Sorry, I used to be a trustee. I, so, I agree. I haven't heard much. So, from them. so this there has to be a way funding the protesters and not you know. There has to be a way to position the TMT issue as a starting point for a new, revitalized acceptance of the responsibility from the people in charge that they're going to be able to address all these long-standing questions. That's what this is, kind of you know. Does that, does that need to be addressed before TMT proceeds with construction? It needs to be addressed. I mean, you know, the issues are not, they're not rocket science. Uh, I mean, housing, <laughs> health care, quality of life, quality I mean, of life. In the <laughs> well, I mean, but, but see, the, the thing that I'm wondering, though, obviously, is that those, those are just not going to get solved in the time frame that we no, have. No, no, you don't have to, to solve them, but you, or have, even, you even have to make to a, have a plan. You have it's to not make a, happen in a the formal frame, commitment yeah. and be serious about addressing that. I mean, I think Mayor Kim presented that plan that he had to talk about it in the government. This is not a plan to give to the TMT. To the, to the, okay, sacred, what do we not understand about sacred? This is not a conversation you're having with the Kiai or the protectors. It's a conversation you're having with the rest of Hawaii. We're going to approve the TMT. We've got to get it moving. But we accept our responsibility to the Hawaiians. And, here, you know, and we're going to start moving on it seriously. And this has to begin with our own Hawaiian caucus in the legislature that has to stand up and be counted. What's so interesting about this TMT issue is not so much the voices that you're hearing. It's the voices that you're not hearing from, the people with the titles, people with the responsibility, the people with the salaries. Sam, the message to the governor. I think has to be uh, the governor must make it clear that the TMT is a surrogate issue for all of the other issues. It is not the real issue. I mean, yes. stopping TMT will not build a single house for a Hawaiian family that's homeless. Stopping the TMT is not going to address the overwhelming incarceration rate of our people. It will not address diabetes and heart disease that plague our community. Those are the issues that are part of the pent-up frustration of Hawaiians, yes. waiting several lifetimes for your homestead. The TMT has become the surrogate for all of, those, all of that pain and suffering. But what the governor is, has so far been unable to do is point that out. To say what you want about the telescope. It does not address the problems that need to be addressed for your people. So he needs two. It's not a before or after. He needs a plan for all of those issues. Yes. That is separate apart from the telescope. Now, once you separate the telescope from all of the wider range of issues for Hawaiians, you might be able to have some functional 
dialogue. As long as the dialogue is only about whether or not the, the telescope is on sacred land, then we, we, we can't move the ball forward. We can make no progress at all. You know, there's another interesting aspect to, to what we're talking about, the quality of life index. When you take a look at the Hawaiian community, the, the economic capacity that we have, right? And, and, and sometimes, you know, I get from the finance people, they say, you shouldn't be talking about it. You know what? When you, just the five major landholding institutions, billions and billions of liquid assets, hundreds and thousands of acres of land, What's missing is any kind of collaboration, any kind of thought leadership, any kind of collective vision that would, would take those resources and figure out a way that they can work together to address the quality of life issues, to ease the pressure on the other stuff. Talk about the Ali'i Trust. Ali'i Trust and the HHL and, and OHA. So, so it's not just the state's responsibility. Hawaiians, we have a responsibility within our own leadership structure to try to rise to the occasion. But for us to sit on the sideline while, while something important like this is going on is, like, to me, egregious. I suppose, Peter, part of the challenge is each elite trust has their own mission. Yes. And they have a fiduciary duty to yes. support their mission. So whether it's education, or Kamehameha, yes. or the elder at Lunalilo, or the orphans for Lili'iwakalani Trust, or the hospital for Queens, yes. each of them have their own missions. So all of them are contributing now. Yeah, they are. To those missions. What is missing is the commitment of the state and the clarity of the leadership to distinguish between <coughs> TMT and all of those others. And I would just differ with you, this is not quality of life. Many of these issues are life and death. People oh, sure. are dying yes. from diabetes and heart disease and the illnesses connected to homelessness and incarceration. Is the, I guess the only concern that I would have is, is the state, the state's going to have a plan, but like you said, you've got to separate it, but we're talking a time frame of, of weeks, maybe months here, and those issues, even if you had a plan, they're just not going to, the plan itself is going to take forever to make up, I mean, OHA hasn't existed for 50 years, yeah. they haven't come up with a plan yet, so where is the, the plan is not going to come up, what time frame are we looking for that would help the governor say, okay, I'm come up with the plan now and you move in the police a week later, a week before. I mean, that's what we're talking about. That's yeah. the conversation the governor's having in his office. I, I agree, but you know. Or, or not have. Or not have. Well, I mean, I okay. hope he's having it. Yeah. But they have to state intention. I mean, if what you're suggesting is they let the TNT go and not say anything about the rest of it, not address the, the, the broken trust, so to speak, not address the fact that DHHL, after all these years, 200,000 acres of land have only been able to build 10,000 homes. That's ridiculous. Stuff like that. So if what you're thinking is that this is going to solve the TNT problem, as we're saying, TNT is not the problem. It, it's, it's just the match. You know, yeah. it's the other stuff. Kalipo might have a thought. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with what uh, Kibo and Peter supported. I mean, yeah, TNT, TNT is, is, is in terms of access, what I, you know, I've always maintained in my, uh, whatever I've said to, to, the leadership at the county level and at the state level is that is that you have to restore the, the rule of law. I mean, uh, TMT is just a permitting, uh, but the state controls the access to the mountain, and so the state has to restore the rule rule of law. They have to remove the uh, uh, the obstruction of the road, and they have to uh, they have to restore access for all parties on the mountain, uh, the maintenance workers, the researchers, uh, the facility staff, uh, the, the protectors as well, as well as the TMT construction crew. And you have to constantly reinforce the message that, that every person that's involved in this conversation has to learn how to share the mountain. What should the next step be for the governor then? What is this next move? Three steps. One, he has to develop the message. He has to make it clear that the TMT has a right to be built, that obstruction of TMT is illegal. That message has to be clear. Two, he needs a plan to support that message. What will it take to ensure that the uh, workers who need access to the mountain 
have that access without threat to their life, without serious harm or injury. Third is the follow through, because this is not a problem for a week or two weeks. This is, will last longer than our lifetime. And so what is, in addition to the construction, the steps necessary to ensure that this is properly maintained in the uh, most productive way for Hawaii. Do you, do you think that Kia'i should be held financially responsible for this protest? No. In the sense, why not? You can't punish the people that have been trummeled and pummeled for a hundred years, you know? I mean, the fact that, uh, that they're doing what they're doing comes out of, a, uh, again, a really deep frustration. That's legitimate. It's a legitimate frustration. So to punish them uh, uh, for trying to act out their belief system because they're frustrated, that there was no other way uh, to get some attention. They finally got some attention. We finally got some attention. And then put them in jail for it. You know? so, no, I don't agree with that. They are responsible for the trespass. They are responsible for the obstruction. They are not responsible for the lack of leadership on the part of the state right. or, or lack of leadership on part of the university or the lack of leadership on part of the consortium that is proposing the plan. The better way to state it, right? I mean, I th well, I guess, I guess the question is, but there's been a harm, right? I mean, some people have lost businesses over this, and who is responsible for that? And it's not just this protest, right? Obviously, other protests have been happening inspired by this, telephone poles getting cut down. At what I, and this is the reason for the question. If the yeah, you are not held responsible for this protest at some level, and maybe not the full 11 million, because who knows what the state and the county is actually spending the money on. I agree that the, that number might be too high. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's what you investigate in court. But if we don't hold protesters responsible for illegal protests, what happens the next time a protest, the next one, and the next one? Sam, as an attorney, you know that you, you have a right to express yourself in, in this country, whether you like it or not. Uh, but you cannot divorce responsibility to those that enable the bad behavior. The state has enabled the behavior that has allowed this to drag out to cost $11 million, to have a situation where you, I, Peter, and Kalepa cannot see the end. So if, if, if you ask me, I think the state is even more responsible. The Kia are exercising their right to political protest. There's a cost. If you trespass, if you obstruct, you go to district court and there's a $50 fine. You do it again, it's $250. You do it three times, it's $500. Sooner or later, that stopped. That's what Mayor Arakawa found when he was on Maui and there was a similar protest at Haleakala. So I think we want to make sure that we separate the uh, uh, responsibility for those trespass violations from the larger public policy deficits that are clear. There is an absolute absence of a leadership and clarity of a message from the state. And that may be a strategy in and of itself. I don't know. I'm not part of that conversation. It may be that they think they'll get tired and go away. But if that's what they think, they misunderstand the psychology of movement. Movement politics is about winning. And right now, they're winning. This is success. This gives meaning to the movement, which makes it stronger, which gives their leaderships a stature. It is a strategy that you couldn't design better to make sure the TNT protests continue. So that's a that's that's the responsibility I'm concerned about. Kalepa? Well, I, I agree with what Evo stated. That uh, yeah, yeah, he, he just said it so uh, uh, so eloquently. The, there is a question we had discussed this before. Um, and it, I think it comes up here on what you were just saying about the fact that you know the, you, you can't arrest the people that have been oppressed for a hundred years. But I mean, that's one of the questions: is are these the people that have been oppressed for no, hundred no, years? That, that wasn't your the, question. The, right. Your I question mean, is: can you hold them responsible? Right. You, Peter said that you can arrest. You were talking about financial responsibility. Oh, yeah, of amongst course. other things. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the question that I had and, the, and where this leads to is the issue of. And, and there's a context that's necessary in the sense of the University of Hawaii, which is a central player in all this, has this as a, a they call themselves a Hawaiian place of learning. And so the question that I always have is, who defines what Hawaiian is? I'm going to ask you the Rob De Niro question. You talking to me? 
<laughs> no, Sam, I mean, honestly, who defines, that's the trap. If you think that's the question, rather than from a Hawaiian point of view, being Hawaiian is how you live. It's how you speak, how you move, what you hold in terms of your values, whether or not you live up to what Aloha really means. You know, you go, you go down a, a road with no ending. Hawaiian is not but, a Hawaiian but, word, first of all. But also, it's a, it's, it's a dysfunctional question, <laughs> because that's what the West has always tried to do. They have tried to divide us as Hawaiians or Japanese and Puerto Ricans and Portuguese, going as far as to put us in separate camps during the plantation era. Well, I'm not sure the West is the one that's going around saying that the UH is a Hawaiian place of learning. I'm pretty sure no, that no, the, no. But you the, see, but you the see community, that are, the Kiai are the ones who claim that UH is a Hawaiian let, place let, of learning let me, and that let me has just an say identity. This. Well, uh, them saying that, uh, that the University of Hawaiian Place of Learning is largely, the relationship is largely political and collegial. It's into collegial politics. That's what all that is. Beginning with Hanani Trask and how that whole what do you, that what do you whole mean? thing got it. Because I don't think everybody did. No, the, the, that. The, the, the genesis of the school, the Hawaiian Studies School, being, uh, Hanani was actually applying for a tenure at the, uh, uh, Amer for, in American Studies. But she caused such a ruckus. They didn't really want her involved in, in American Studies. So the, the chancellor at the time, or, or the president at the time, created this Hawaiian opportunity and gave her the opportunity in order to get tenure take over, and, and to, so she, that's how she ended up starting the whole Hawaiian Studies program. So that, that was a, so it, was a, it was the politics of the situation that allowed that to happen. Now, whether or not, you know. Well, my so, concern with your question was that it, it, it carried with it a pejorative, that by labeling the university as a Hawaiian place of learning, that was somehow excluding other people. Yeah, yeah. And that is the most un-Hawaiian thing you could possibly do. We I are, agree. We, we, we are different from, from the West to this extent. In the, in the United States, there was an emphasis on racial purity. You were not white, for example, if you're one drop of some sort of other blood. In Hawaii, you could be Hawaiian and not be Hoko. John Davis, uh, Isaac uh, Davis and John Young, uh, you could be Queen Emma, who's a descendant from Keoniana. Uh, yeah. and, and we embraced other people. So a Hawaiian place of, uh, of learning means that this is a place that embraces, that includes everybody else, including my Aldi friends, my Japanese friends, et cetera, et cetera. It, it, it really, I have to respond strongly because it rankles me when I, I hear people trying to put us in a pigeonhole that was created to divide. Well, it's, that's a fascinating part because I'm not sure that uh, I'm not I'm not sure that the people who you are claiming would do that are the ones who call it a Hawaiian place of learning. I mean, when I asked this question previously at a debate about water on Mauna Kea, the response from the Hawaiian programs first, the individual who was identified as a Native Hawaiian program officer said that Hawaiians define what a Hawaiian place of learning is, yes. and the person down at the front, Native Hawaiians, what she meant. The person down at the front who said what you just said, which is that Hawaii includes all people of all races of all cultures, that, that the Hawaiian, Native Hawaiian cultural or program officer ob objected to that definition. She said Native Hawaiians are the ones who define what Hawaiian is. And that was, I objected. I, I found that objectionable. And, and, I, agree and I, with think you. That, I think uh, we are, and they are when they're saying that, and we are when we, we, we speak of this, uh, uh, ships passing in, in the night. We're talking about two different things. One is a political status. One is a racial category. And another way to look at it, as I'm, I choose to look at it, is that it is a cultural or system of cultural values that define whether or not you're Hawaiian or not, whether or not you act with humility, whether or not you try to be pleasing, work together, be humble, and, and patient. All of the elements. You don't need the cocoa to be a cultural Hawaiian you know, in, in terms of defining. So some of the greatest uh, uh, contributors to Hawaiian culture have been People with not one drop of Hawaiian blood, like Wokea okay, Nogomeyer, uh, yeah. Kila Wilson, uh, people yeah. like that. Alika Spore. Uh, yeah. So, so, it's a, so being Hawaiian, I mean, I would define as, as how you live your life, your, your lifestyle. As an example, my brother and I, you come to my house, you will see all kinds of Hawaiian stuff. You go to my, we're Hawaiian Chinese. You go to my brother's house, it's all Chinese. 
So does that mean he's not Hawaiian and well, I'm Hawaiian and he's not? I don't know. <laughs> what does that mean? It's a good question. <laughs> Kalapa, you were you were, you wanted to weigh in? No, I, 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 I'm enjoying the conversation as an observer, but I have to agree with both what uh, Peter and uh, uh, Kim were, are saying. I guess it's my question. See, the danger for me is that, and, and I'm not trying to make it about myself, there's other <laughs> TMT supporters that would face the same issue, which is I come out, TMT supporters come out and say I support TMT, and all of a sudden I'm a fake Hawaiian, I'm not even a real Hawaiian anymore. There's, there's yes. a, if, if, it's, if the irony is, if it's not oh. based on the cocoa, if it's not based on race, then all of a sudden you can exclude people based on your special committee of individuals that get to decide who's Hawaiian. And now, now who voted for that committee? Who elected that committee? But apparently that committee exists because they tell TMT supporters all the time that we're not Hawaiian. Yeah, but them saying so doesn't make it so sad. Well, yeah. I have been called two things in particular, coconut and donkey. Uh, because, I've never heard before. Be, be, because of my testimony at the Land Use Commission, hundreds of responses, five to one, positive. But amongst the negative responses, most often it was you're a coconut, which is brown outside, white inside, or donkey, which is just an insult. But not a single, not a single point with regards to the argument. Listen, your panel that you have today on this thing is probably taking more hits about not being online from social media than you can believe, you yeah, know? And, and one of the reasons why my community isn't more vocal is because they don't just... My, my high school classmate told me this. Called me up and said, hey, Kimo, I, I, saw, I saw your testimony. Terrific, but now that I or my wife have the time or patience for this anymore, go get an umbrella. There, there are lots of Hawaiians <laughs> who say, this is a bunch of, you know what, I'm not going to waste my time, yeah. but go get them. Yeah. And so yeah. when you called me, you remember how reluctant I was? Oh, well, I, I, <laughs> and, I, I know. And, and you, you persisted and persisted until I just finally gave up. And Look said, how happy you are now. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm not happy. I'm still, I am a reluctant warrior. I think what My is, only issue is you're depriving <laughs> us of educational uh, opportunities and you're not solving the health incarceration and housing so, problems. So, so maybe the title of the show should be TMT instead of, uh, instead of defining sacred history, TMT defining Hawaiian. I think so. <laughs> I mean, I think because, it's, because the irony of it all is that in, in, in this magical committee that Hawaiian. I imagine, you're saying that you can be Hawaiian and support TMT. I am Hawaiian. I mean, see, I don't have any uh, ambiguity in terms of my identity. I don't care. People can call me coconut. They can call me whatever they want but I will walk through the world with confidence and purpose because it is important for at least 100 scholars every year for the next 10 years. And not to mention a million dollars in rent and a million dollars in workforce pipeline yeah. support. Yeah. For, for all the good reasons. And, and none, of, none of the housing and healthcare and incarceration issues are, are addressed by the TIE at all. None. So that frustration based upon all of the uh, decades of, of neglect is misplaced. Well, I think yeah, we're, I just okay. want to yeah. say that, uh, you know, Hawaiians, we, we have lived under many different chiefdoms uh, all at the same time, right? Did, did Kai Kili agree with, with uh, Kamehameha's leadership? Did uh, Keohua, uh, was he wrong for challenging? Was Keohua a, a traitor for challenging Kamehameha? Okay. Just historically, we have, we have, we have lived under different opinions and different uh, different uh, leadership structures that, that, that work, work in sync uh, all the time. So I think having disagreements uh, in, the, in, the, in the societies, that's just life. I want to close then on this note, because um, I think we got to wrap up now, is what do you tell young kids, especially young Native Hawaiian kids watching this broadcast right now, or watching it later in the future, what, what message would you send to them as you close? I tell them what I tell my daughter, who lives with me, who teaches Hawaiian language at the University of Hawaii, who is a kiai. She protests the telescope. Uh, we delight in each other's differences. We, we have no uh, problem discussing this at home. Uh, I, I don't uh, denigrate her for her opinions. I entirely respect her opinions. She respects mine, and, and, and we don't take ourselves too seriously, and that, that's a part of it. 
But I ask them, if you ask the question, what must we do? Tolstoy wrote a whole book on it. What must we do? We must address our health issues. We are dying from diabetes and heart disease. We must address housing. We are homeless, and then you have all the diseases that are associated with this. We are incarcerated at proportions that, that are appalling. All of those issues are issues of poverty. Every single one. And to the extent I can lift a portion of our community up, I have an obligation. I have a duty. And if it's a duty, that's sacred, I'll call it that. A sacred duty to advocate for lifting up a portion of our community to that end. Here. I would just quote Manono, you know, at the Battle of Como, as she lay dying, keep you aloha. Whatever, keep you aloha. Kalapa? Well, you know, it, uh, my, 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 uh, my, my grandfather, and uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, Terry Kanalu Young, who was a professor at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. His grandmother, Susan Kalapa, my uncle Archie, they would all gather at the Kapo Fulu House. And, uh, they would have these robust, vigorous discussions about, about things that concern everyday Hawaiian community. Um, and they invited different perspectives. And the, 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 what was only, the only requirement was that they needed to be able to articulate and, and, and make, make your point uh, and, and your reason. And that's what I invite Hawaiians to do, is, is to be respectful, to have great debate, but, but, but to leave the conversation with a sense of a law. And, and that's what I hope that, uh, that in the very end, it will be hard, but we all need to find this place of a law. Thank you very much to Think Tech Hawaii, and uh, thank you to all the supporters of Imua TMT, all the donors that have made this community outreach effort possible. And thank you especially to our panelists, Peter Poe, Timo Stone, and Kalapa Bayan. Please support Imua TMT if you want to see more of these conversations. We're going to try and keep this conversation going, trying to keep it out in the public sphere so we can continue this conversation with Aloha, helping our community understand this very complicated issue, not just in Hawaii, but around the world, too. Thank you very much for watching. Aloha.